We here at WDAY Television tonight are marking an incredible anniversary. 70 years ago, today in fact, at this hour, our WDAY pioneers were about to hit the air for the first time ever. As WDAY news reporter Kevin Wallivan tells us tonight, our legacy station had quite the start. And the flag of it was quite the time for local entertainment in Fargo-Moorhead in the region. WDAY radio was in its heyday. Coming on the air in the 1920s. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another talent parade and radio review. Tonight, we're appearing in Holly, Minnesota. We had live musicians and performers night and day. Greats like Peggy Lee. Lee Stewart. And Ginny Gordon. But then... The early 1950s. North Dakota, North Dakota, where blue skies rise in your way. Television. And WDAY was there at the very beginning as one of the great pioneers in the upper Midwest. In June of 1953, WDAY television went on the air bringing TV to this area for the first time. Here in the WDAY lobby, a legacy wall those pioneers who are responsible for us starting. And then on the wall, the original document, June 1st of 1953. We went on the air with a test pattern at 6.30. And then this. Tonight we enter a new phase and bring you the exciting and fascinating medium of TV. It would be the start of a great connection between WDUI television. Ken Kennedy joined the staff in 1933 as program director. From the early days, with local WDUI celebrities like Ken Kennedy. What is the present name of the ancient city of Constantinople? Loyal viewers still remember him. He was sitting up in a coffin, yes. and he'd say, Gadagan Allah Sama Sordatel Yegul Yeulik Velda. And now we're going to have another spooky movie. There was the ever popular show Party Line. Thousands tuned in to Verna Newell and host Bill Weaver and later Boyd Christensen. There were shows like Santa's Toyland. WDY TV became that extra member of the family. Viewers today still remember when our WDY All Stars took the show on the road to small towns like Lisbon, North Dakota. And when they came down, they would play in the roller skating pavilion there, and it was a huge building, and the crowds were just enormous. We could hear the traffic going by at night, and it was just, <laughs> it, was, it was a parade. From WDAY News Center 6. Over the years, we brought you some of this region's biggest stories. The screens and projectors that once were part of this great little school out here, now nothing but shambles. The 1957 Fargo tornado. Sometimes when you see a tragedy like this, it just doesn't all add up, does it? Our film crews not only documented it all. This is Golden Ridge from the air. Our film helped lead to the F rating we now know today. Our news teams at the time interviewing the mother who lost six children in that tornado. Carp told me that one of my girls was taken to St. Luke's Hospital, as what the others, she dropped his head. Uh, and they went, they were dead. Decades later, I would speak with that mother shortly before her death. The sisters, they gave me money and sent me out to the back door to go to Penny's and buy myself a dress for the funeral because I didn't have nothing to wear. Even 70 years ago, our young news team documented the big events. Elevator fires from decades ago, those fires of the early 80s. There were crippling blizzards like this one in 1966, a Norway king's visit to Fargo-Moorhead. Mr. Guy made a feeble disclaimer. Political debates and the ever-popular WDAY Band Day that attracted thousands of musicians to Fargo-Moorhead every year. We were there during the emotional farm crisis of the 80s. Abortion protests, the dramatic river rescue of Alvaro Garza. And we were there when Bob Hope came to town. We were beside you during the floods, from the 50s through the recent years, 97, 09. We were there to bring you the tragic stories of missing children, Sarah Rarden, Gina North, years later, the murder of Drew Shadeen. 
So much has changed, but one thing hasn't. A commitment to community, yours, ours. So join us, all of us, 6 and 10 daily on WDAY News Center 6. And the promise to continue locally produced news from a hometown, family-owned station, now celebrating 70 years. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bob, Thank you very much. Kevin Wallivan, WDAY News. And our call letters, WDAY, have been part of a Fargo-based family-owned business going back to the 1930s. The form newspaper families involving the Blacks and Marseilles have been leading this WDAY broadcasting ship for nearly 90 years. With WDAY-TV celebrating 70 years, Bill and Jane Marseilles say the locally controlled family business is all about community and employees who call this town Progress, home. Some move on, some yes, well, it is our baby, but, you know, We've always talked about the form family, you know, and that goes back to uh, three generations ago. But, of course, that includes WDAY because the form became involved in WDAY in 1935 and then bought the uh, majority control in 1958. So DAY has been part of the form family, and we like to think of all of our employees, our team members, as we call them now, as part of our family as well. The Marseille's son, Bill Jr., is now president and CEO of Forum Communications, WDAY-TV. So proud to look back at the long history where we all come, came from. And we take it seriously we do. every day. Mm -hmm. Though I don't think we're going to start singing, dancing, <laughs> or playing a musical instrument. Unless we're Jesse. Yeah. Yeah. She can. Right. We brought up the saxophone.